Divine True Spirit Discussions Discussions with people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Jesus and Mary talked to privileged and influential men who passed 50 to 400 years ago and who influenced humankind negatively. This session was recorded on the 9th of December 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Welcome everyone again. We're, I'm here with Mary today and we've decided to do a bit more channeling. And uh, we don't know who's coming yet, or Mary does, but I don't. So, <laughs> so we'll leave that to uh, be described when it actually happens. But we'll just have a slight pause and then we'll be able to get started with our program today. Um, this is a group that um, there's a spokesperson. Mm -hmm. They're predominantly men. Mm -hmm. In fact, they feel like all men. Mm -hmm. um, Jeffrey is a spokesperson who wants to speak on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Um, these fellows were brought to me because they are, they're quite influential in events on the earth. Mm -hmm. they, they influence a lot of uh, politics and social issues mm -hmm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. and that's about as much as I know mm -hmm. no <laughs> so far. <laughs> yep. So Jeffrey's the spokesperson. Yep. <coughs> yep. Mm -hmm. But... Um, they sort of introduced themselves to me as learned gentlemen. Yes. So, um, <laughs> I know he's going to want to introduce himself to you. So, yes. yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. I'm Jeffrey Clarkson, mm -hmm. and I'm here as a, the appointed spokesperson for quite a number of us who have taken an interest in you mm -hmm. and would like to discuss certain issues with you today. Sure. When you say, um, can, I, can I know a little more about you when, when you were alive on earth? It varies amongst us. Mm -hmm. I myself passed fairly recently mm -hmm. in the 1940s mm -hmm. during the war. Yeah. Oh. Yes, um, I wasn't a soldier, mm -hmm. but I was quite aged at that time. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, that's me. I was quite wealthy so, and influential. Mm -hmm. So you passed from old age or from the yes, consequences had, of old age? Yes, it wasn't a prolonged illness, but I had some condition in my heart and lungs mm -hmm. and I passed fairly rapidly, but I had had a long life. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I was 89 at the time of my passing. Right. So yep. that was quite a good innings for As the saying goes. that time, yes. <laughs> yes. But I am amongst some of the <coughs> uh, most recently passed here. Mm -hmm. And because there is not such a gap in the time period, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, I was selected. Um, and um, could you let me know what, before you passed, you, you said you were quite a wealthy person, an influential person? Yes, I was a businessman. Right. In, do you mind me asking what country? Uh, well, I had business in the United States and in England. Right. I originated from England. Yes. But during my life, I had immigrated to the USA. Yeah. And in fact, a lot of my wealth came from trading uh, and shipping yep. in between the, the two continents, if you will. Yes. Yeah. And is Geoffrey Clarkson your actual name from Earth? Well, I have altered it slightly, in fact, hmm. yes. But this is how I, I wish to be referred to. Yes. Clarkson is in fact my mother's name. Right. And you've altered it because of your reputation on earth or? Oh. The reason why I ask is when we discuss things with spirits, we prefer that they're truthful about their identity and that their identity can be recognised so that does that make sense? Yes. Mm. 
In fact, my name, my surname on earth was Patterson. Patterson. Yes. That's good, Geoffrey. Well, well, I'm not particularly comfortable with exposing that. Yes, and, I, and that in itself, um, you know, demonstrates to a degree that you're still quite connected to the earth and what's happening on the earth. And, and I understand. Indeed, yep. we are all very connected to what is happening on the earth. Mm. In fact, it has been of great pleasure for us to realise that uh, the great influence that many of us exerted or uh, enjoyed while we were on earth has only continued and in some ways flourished since our passing. Mm. In fact, in some ways you have more influence than you had before because you have a far more reaching ability to see what's really going on. Indeed. Mm. Yes. No, I understand that. So what would you like to discuss with us, Geoffrey? Or what would your group like to discuss? Well, we have been observing you mm -hmm. and we are somewhat troubled. Mm -hmm. Oh well, troubled is perhaps not the right word, but there seems to be some discussion amongst you about how our continued influence upon the earth or mm -hmm. presence here upon the earth is not healthy in some way. Mm -hmm. Now, most of us have dismissed this idea of quite, yep. quite quickly. Um, and of course, we came upon you because you exert some influence in the spirit world. Mm. And we, maybe we noticed could, this. Maybe you could talk about that for a little bit. Well, we see that um, you have quite a number of spirits around you. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there is quite a brightness wherever you are upon the earth. And we have come past to look at that at times. Mm -hmm. We like to be well informed, informed of everything that's happening on mm -hmm. earth. And we do not do as some other spirits we observe who just stick to one area or one locale, we like to travel mm -hmm. and see everything, the mm. scope of everything mm -hmm. that is happening on earth. Yeah. So initially we were attracted because there is some brightness um, emanating from you really, but there is also a large amount of uh, negativity, spirits, mm -hmm. dark, what we would call the mm. Very lower, dark spirits. Yes. Yeah around you but also it came to our attention that at times you have very bright spirits who come to you we find them unusual mm -hmm. and quite difficult to approach mm -hmm. why, why is that Do you know, we don't know no we, this is something we would like to discuss with you good good um we cannot seem to get proximity with them and when you say um, you cannot seem to it feels uncomfortable getting closer to them is that how it feels it feels as if we wish to go towards them and we are almost repelled or we cannot progress further towards them right um and so we're, what you were observing is, can i summarize more. what you were observing no there's more there's more Good idea. we also noticed that a number of what we would call these lowly spirits mm -hmm. Um, seem to change under your guidance yes and move and we've not seen this very frequently at all some when, when of you say the very frequently have you ever seen it before some it? of the uh, some of those who have been here longer than I say that they did see this in times past yeah. but really there are very few of these lowly spirits who are assisted on the earth mm. and very few of them actually have these changes what we would call dramatic changes yes and these very bright spirits come towards them mm. and they go off with those bright spirits and yes mm. not yes they do yes so this is why, mm -hmm. in answer to your question, we have come to speak with you. There is some dissent amongst the group about really... The... 
the point uh, of it. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. About really if we should speak with you and why. Mm -hmm. um, Is that because some of you feel afraid or? Well, many feel that um, there is plenty for us to do. Of course. And why should we take heed of one single person saying that our influence is not really beneficial mm. or not good for us? Mm. But I myself am quite curious. Mm. May I ask you a few more background questions? Certainly. Do, do many of you have any religious background or is your religious background varied? It is. Could we say we have uh, cultural uh, backgrounds that include some religious influence, mm -hmm. but none of us would have typified ourselves to be religious men while on earth. Good I, when I say that, many of us went to church, of many of us, but we, God it and... It wasn't a heart-based feeling. It was more of a... It was more of a societal, social. yes. Mm, societal thing. Good I. Now, when you talk about the, uh, if I can just summarise a little about what's going on then, that's yes. piqued your interest. Um, firstly, there's uh, a lot, there's, there's firstly my own brightness. Have you seen that brightness on earth before? No. No. So, so there's my own brightness. There are at times when, for example, there a new baby, yes. for example, mm -hmm. we see some brightness. Yes. Yeah. Um, it is not to the same degree, but um, as yourself, I yeah. mean, but there is some, at times we see not just in newborn babies, but in very select people, a form of what we would have called innocence. Mm -hmm. Brighter than the average person. Brighter than that. the average person. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, for yourself, it is something quite different, mm -hmm. and you are also not young. Mm. So most people who are have some semblance of brightness are quite young or or babies. Yes, mm. or or uh, disabled in some way. Yes, no, uh, I understand. Yes. Where they have not had the chance to make decisions of their own. Is this the reason? We, we'll talk about some of the reasons. Yes, um, but it, um, if I ask a bit more. You see that there, because of this brightness, there's groups of spirits who are attracted. Some of these spirits have brightness themselves, or even brighter than I. Yes. Um, and those are the spirits that you feel like approaching, but, but are unsure of approaching. Yes. And then there's a whole group of very dark spirits who seem to have two types of goals. One group of dark spirits are those who want some help, and they often come around us wanting help. Yes, and we observe them being helped. Yes. And then there's another group of dark spirits whom you'll also notice that are quite attacking, and there's quite large numbers of those. Yes. Um, who basically just want to harm our life, and you would observe those. Mm. Yes. Um, in, do you know where you are in the spirit world, uh, or do you, or do you th well, even understand what I've just asked you? <laughs> no? Well, we would say we are uh, on, on Earth. Earth. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Well, let's. Uh, I think the best way to approach this is. Um, well, let's answer some of the questions first that you have. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the the what what the brightness indicates, and why the brightness becomes important as a result of what it indicates. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. With those spirits who come that you are attracted to but feel like you can't really get close to, these spirits are very, very bright spirits. And the reason why they are very bright is because there are two, there's two primary reasons. One is that they have received God's love into their soul and that has caused a transformation of their soul which then also affects their spirit body. And I'll talk to you about physical versus spirit body versus soul in a minute. And then there's um, another reason, and that is that they have a large amount of truth. Uh, when I say a large amount of truth, they understand the truth of the universe because God has shared such truth with them through the connection they have with God in love. 
Now, we can prove what I'm saying to you through some scientific processes if you'd like to engage them or to observe them. Um, and so that's probably one of the things I would like to do in this discussion, if we can, because I don't want to make to you any unsubstantiated claims. I want to substantiate each claim. Does that make sense? So uh, if we can clarify something, mm -hmm. we are aware that those lowly spirits who, mm -hmm. yes, appear quite dark, but they're quite uh, some, as you said, vicious or some very sad and dejected. Mm -hmm. So uh, some look almost demonic. Yes. Um, or what you'd classify as demonic. You now know that to be just people, obviously, but they appear demonic in there. In, it was what you would have considered as a drawing of a demon in the, in, when you're on Earth. Yes. And then there's others who just appear sad and dejected and, and almost suicidally sad. Um, yes, and w we understand that these are... Oh, if we may call it like when on earth we would have called this the lower the lower elements of society yeah i think the you're being polite now you can say what you would have really called them on earth if you wish <laughs> because many of you would have called them something even worse than that surely well, th they're not people that we would commonly associate with. Mm -hmm. So the, you'd call them the common people? Yes, and they're not uh, favourable company for us. Yes, and you view yourselves as superior to them. Well, certainly we're functioning and um, we have this influence, this intellectual uh, ability mm -hmm. above what they seemingly have. Mm -hmm. But this... Can I just say something, Jeffrey? You don't have to quant qualify your, your words in this discussion because we're very happy to have an open discussion and I feel that partly now what ha is happening and I know it's due to the time period in which you live but, but you're couching some of the uh, feelings that you have in, in what I would classify as uh, a facade and... And I would prefer that you just say, come out and say what you really feel, because it would help you more if you do so. And it would help the group who's with you more if you do so. And you're not going to get judged for it, and you're not going to be condemned for it. And also, how you feel needs to accurately f reflect what you're saying. Do you follow me? Not particularly. I'm not really understanding <coughs> what you're saying. Well... If you, if you analyse your true feelings towards the common people of Earth, you do believe yourself to be superior to them. Is that not true? Yes. And it's okay to say so. Right. Right. Um, I, I don't think that even... Yes. Well, we don't even feel uh, any shame about that. No, That's but it's really interesting that you wouldn't say that. So <clears throat> this is what I'm encouraging you to do, is just to say what you truly feel <laughs> is the situation rather than... Because you, you're worried about how I or Mary may, or the channel may respond to the information, um, but you don't need to worry about that because we're, we're okay with you referring to anybody how you truly feel them to be, not, you know, and, and we can talk about that then. And we can talk openly and honestly about that rather than rather than you couching everything politely as is your upbringing to do um, i yes i just feel that i am speaking in the the manner in which i am accustomed i don't feel <coughs> mm -hmm. there is any duplicity in what i'm doing this is just simply how i view things yes but but some of your viewpoints are quite shall we say uh unequal in, a, in the sense that you believe yourself to be superior, you believe these other people, the common people, to be inferior to yourselves. And this is one of the reasons why you believe that you can guide them and, and tell them what to do, because they do not know what to do themselves, is the general yes, opinion. Yes, that's true. And what I'm going to suggest to you, that that is an unloving premise, but we'll talk about love in a minute. Because what I first want to do is focus on the issue of the brightness 
and then answer the questions about the brightness and then we can see the relationship between brightness and love and then we can talk about why it is that certain people are bright and other people are not. Does that okay. make sense? And, so, and we can provide some scientific evidence uh, with some help from, from some help from some of my spirit friends who will come and, and share with you. And this will help you work through whether this is true or not. And once we've established whether it's true or not, then we can continue with the discussion about the other matters that you wanted to question. Does that make sense? Well, if I can be direct then. Yep we don't feel that these bright ones are in any way superior to ourselves. I know, but I can demonstrate that they are. In fact, we do not aspire to their, what they do. I know that too. So and in fact, what would in be fact, our incentive to change, to change the way that we are, to change our presence here upon the earth? Well, all of you are interested in power. Would that not be true? Um, we like to be in charge. Yes, so you're interested in power, having power over other people. Well, yes, I suppose. We wouldn't see that as a negative thing. No, it, I, it I understand. It seems from what, how you say you, it that you, it's a negative thing. Well, you feel that some people need to take power because there's a whole lot of people who don't have any power or do not want to take power and, and who need guidance. And this is one of the reasons why you wish to take power. So, yes. again, don't worry so much about the judgments of it. I'm just making a statement that you like having power over other people. Isn't that not true? Well, yes. Yeah. And, and you've been what I would classify as bound to the earth after your passing. So how long, is, how long has the longest person been bound to the earth since their passing in your group? 400 years. 400 years. So, so for 400 years down to, and you would be one of the shortest people yes. uh, in terms of passing, uh, closest to our time. So from, from 400 years to around 50 years or so ago, you, you've got a group of people, mostly men here, who, who are basically still concerned about the goings on uh, on the earth and what happens on the earth. Is that not true? Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. Yes. And and those and that concern includes governing. you in a way you're in sharing in the governance of the earth. Yes. Yes. And in fact, you direct world leaders and, and, and not just world leaders in politics, but world re leaders in economics, in religious, even in religion and, and other areas of life. Institutions. We yes. like to take an interest in institutions and guide them. But obviously there's people involved in the guidance of those institutions. Every Certainly. institution has leaders and Certainly. you obviously are connecting to the leaders of those institutions and trying to guide, guide them in in the direction that you feel they need to go yes yes and as such you have a fair bit of power do you not or you believe yes yes we do have a fair bit we of power. have a lot of power mm, okay and what i'm suggesting is you like to have that yes power. yes <laughs> and, and it's okay to this. admit that you enjoy that yes and, uh, and and again we do not feel that this is a bad thing well again you were quite reticent in sharing it as a feeling um well I suppose that what I f find from yourself is that there seems to be some kind of f feeling that mm -hmm. power is bad and so... No, not at all. I feel there's, ty there's types of power that are bad and there's types of power that are good. I'm sure you can see that on earth there's a lot of very destructive use of power. And yes, there are many people yes. who die, in fact in the Second World War and the First World War, millions of people died in the destructive use of power. Certainly. So you can see, you also see that there are certain, historically, certain men who have taken power over others on the earth and, and involved, been involved in the genocide or the murder of millions and millions of people. Yes. So obviously, you know, there is, either, there is a good use of power and there's a bad use of power. Yes, is and that I suppose that, that really we do not examine our motivations as much as you are prompting. We do what we do, it's our duty, and we do it. Mm -hmm. No, I, I get that. About we do what not I'm think about whether we enjoy it or whether 
we see it as a role that we had upon the earth mm. and now we continue it. But obviously you must enjoy it to a degree, otherwise you wouldn't do it. Certainly. Certainly. So, yeah. so this is what I'm suggesting, that you enjoy doing these things, otherwise we feel you, you wouldn't do them. We were appointed by society while we were on earth. No, I don't know if I could agree with that statement, but I understand you feeling that way. Through our privilege and through our capabilities, mm -hmm. we, in, in a way, society encouraged and selected us to move into these positions of leadership, which we continue now. Yes, and I feel society, much of society, accepted you doing so. Yes. And, and in fact, if they rejected you doing so, then maybe your lives may have been very, very different. But, but that, that still doesn't change the fact that you enjoy it. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, no. We take <laughs> your point. I understand point. that there were causal reasons why you accepted the responsibilities that you now take on. And there are some of those reasons actually include your joy of doing so. Not, Certainly. not just the fact that you were born to privilege or born to position. No, I suppose that others here wish to say that they didn't think about whether they enjoyed it or not. It's just something that they've always I, done. I get that too, yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of times we do a lot of things even after passing that we did before we passed because it was just what we're used to doing and there's no other knowledge available to us and so we continue And we do not consider things like joy no but but it is something i feel that you might you should consider a mm. and happiness is a is a as a primary concern i feel if you wish to grow and 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 enjoy your life and if you imagine another ten thousand years of doing what you've been doing can you see that it would be a shame if if you, you experience no joy in that period of time Certainly. Certainly. So, so. Well, uh, yes, I suppose. You see what I'm yeah. saying? That like, while you may have been doing this for 400 years, which is quite a short period of time, um, you know, the reality is that, you know, you could be doing it for 10,000 years, and that would be, and and it would be a pity to not experience more joy than you're currently experiencing, if that was possible. I'm suggesting. Mm. If if extra joy was possible, then surely it would be good to consider how to obtain it. Just Again, this is not something we've ever thought of. I, I understand that. Now, can I explain the condition that you are actually in? And this is going to be a difficult uh, discussion for a while, but if you can have an open mind about what I'm going to talk about, it will help in terms of understanding how everything works after you die. Does that make sense? Because okay. you've been very focused on the earth and what's happening on the earth without very much concern about what's happening to you. In other words, what's going on for yourselves. You've been more concerned about what's going on for the earth and how you can, what you believe has helped the earth and, and so forth, um, without having much concern for what's going on in, in, in your own lives and how long you're going to stay in this position of helping the earth. And mm. what I'm going to suggest is that is a, there's a whole lot, a lot of things that, that you in this state have not learned that you are capable of learning if you decided to engage some, short, some basic experiments that would increase your joy and happiness and also open, uh, open you up to the possibility of a very, very large universe of which you're only experiencing a small portion. I'm also indicating to you that there's the possibility of more happiness and also the possibility of more power available to you. But, but it would have to be exercised in a way that's different to the way that you're currently exercising power and I'd like to illustrate these things to you. Does that make sense? Mm, okay. So what I'm going to do is invite one of these bright spirits to come to you. And he's just going to stand at some distance from you. Um, he will tell you his name. Yes, he says he's Matthew. Mm -hmm. How long, how old is Matthew? We should ask him. Mm, ask him. 
Hmm. He, well, he has been in the spirit world for 120 years. Yes. Okay, so, and how um, young does he look? Quite young. Right, he's younger than all of you. Is that not true? <coughs> he looks younger. We do not examine ourselves, so... How would you like, if you just look briefly at each other and then examine... Yes, 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 he is much younger than us. So what does your body look like compared to his body? Well, we look old. Yes, and he looks young. So firstly, there must be a reason why he looks young, even though he's 120 years since he's passed, and you look old, even though you passed only 60 years ago or so. Yes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So he's older than you, but looks younger than you. There must be a reason for it, a scientific reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So this is not just... Chance random. or random? No. Uh, let's bring another person, an even older one. What's his name? It's it's a woman. Yep. What's her her name? name is um, Veronique. Yep. Yes, and she has been. How long has she been passed? 280 years. All right. And she does look very young also. Yes. And she looks very similar to the other man, Matthew, in age? Yes. Hmm. Okay. So here we see some consistency. So there's got to be some reason for this consistency. Well, these are two of, two of those bright spirits. That's correct. Aren't they in some way different to us? No, they're not. They, in fact, if they give you a projection, which they're capable of doing, of what their condition was when they first passed, what do you observe? Yes, quite dark. Almost, Matthew was almost a, one of these lowly spirits. So he was in a worse condition than yourself? Yes. Mm. And how about... Veronique, she, Veronique. well, not quite as dark, dark, mm -hmm. but certainly quite ill looking. Yes. And what families were they born from on earth? Wealthy families. Mm -hmm. So they both were born into privilege, just like yourselves. Yes. Okay. So they had a similar background to yourselves. They are of a similar age to some of the people that you have in your group, but they look much, much younger and they are much, much brighter. And there must be a scientific reason for such a condition to exist. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the other thing is that they don't live where you live. Now, you, when I say where you live, you know you live on Earth, don't you? You, live, you remain here on Earth? Yes. Yes. Can they, they will give you a projection of where they live. Oh, it is quite different. Mm -hmm. And what do you notice? Well, it is far more beautiful than the Earth. Correct. It is much, the colours are much brighter. Correct. And, yes, it's quite beautiful. Yes. Much more beautiful than anything you've observed, either on Earth or after your passing. Yes, well, we've only really observed Earth. Yes, and this is what I'm point, going to point out to you. Although the, the appearance of Earth, that, that is true, my friends are reminding me, the appearance of Earth altered quite dramatically after, after you passed. passed. So before you passed, if you remember, before your passing, you saw colours. You saw shapes clearly, colours clearly, and depending on your eyesight, of course. But yes. you saw things clearly and, and everything didn't have a haze or, or a murky look to it. But now when you look at the earth, everything is dark looking and hazy. And, and it's only occasionally when you come to see someone like myself that you see any brightness and any colour. Yes, I had forgotten this. Yes. And it's only, the colour seems to only exist around the person who's bright. 
Yes. Have you noticed that? And then mm. when you go further away from the person who's bright, the, the environment gets darker and darker and darker. Yes. And, and in many ways, you're just seeing almost hazy outlines of things going on on Earth. Yes, I've grown so accustomed to that that I had forgotten that it has ever been different. Mm. And if you remember when you first passed, it was one of your confusions. Yes, yes. And then I... You sort of accepted it. Yes, and I began to understand how I could see what was happening. Yes, so you started to, you could say, attune yourself to the darkness. You, you came to accept it emotionally. Mm. Uh, and when I say accepted emotionally, before then there was some confusion about why is this dark and, and before, every, you know, the same locations on earth that you were used to frequenting, they had bright and vivid colour or, or not as bright as what these people have at their, no. it, at their homes, but, but it did have some bright and vivid colour that you saw through your natural eyes, through, through your physical eyes, but then um, after you passed, that bright and vivid colour disappeared completely and unless there was a bright spirit nearby or a bright person nearby, and, and it's very rare to find a bright person, so sometimes you see bright spirits on the earth, there was colour around them, but, but only in their vicinity. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay, so that's the first thing, uh, and, and I won't discuss the answer to that just yet, because I want to show you a number of different things that you possibly haven't thought of since your passing and also show you a number of different things about the qualities of Matthew and Veronique um, compared to uh, you know, what you've generally observed. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then we have to find an answer to all of this somehow. And this is what I want to help you do. The second thing I would like to discuss with you is the power these particular people have. Now, what I would like you to do is to concentrate as much as you possibly can on exerting as much of your physical power as you can right, mm. on Earth. Right. Physical power, you mean? Yes. Can you move an object on Earth, for example? No. No. Okay. So you can only influence people, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So when you attempt, you obviously have some people that you attempt to influence. Mm, a great many. And they obviously accept your influence. Yes. So when in you... Fact, in this is, we see this as more valuable than moving mere objects. Of course, because uh, obviously having people do a lot of things can get a lot of things done. Yes. Um, that, that's very true. What I would like to do though is uh, I'd like to demonstrate to you, give you a demonstration of power, right? And to do that, what I would like to do is for you to demonstrate to others, the other spirits around you, just one of you, and it doesn't matter if it's yourself, Jeffrey, or another of your group, just attempts to demonstrate to others of you how much physical or, and spiritual power they have by, by trying to make their body as bright as they possibly can. No, we can't. Okay, and if that person can go to the a location on the earth that they used to frequent as a, as a child or as a person on earth that they enjoyed, you know, a location that had colour, yes. and try to brighten up their location so that you can see the colour, that would be very good if they can try to do that. A number are trying. Mm -hmm. That's all right. We will just give a little bit of time for them to come or we'll come back to the discussion. And no, no, none. No, none can make the circumstance brighter. But they ask, surely they can just have other people on Earth make it brighter. But there's no other people on Earth who exist that are brighter. Is there? No. And particularly none of the ones you're influencing have any brightness at all to do so. No. 
So there's only, you've pointed out, you've visited me because of my brightness. So when you're here, do you see colour in the room we're in, for example? Yes, yeah, some. Yep. It does not extend that far. No. So it exists around the person. Yes. So you can see the colour, but only around the person. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, now what I'm going to do is ask, firstly, one, one uh, the lady spirit, Veronique, to display her brightness. But there's going to be one caveat to it, and that is that when she's too bright for you to bear, um, she will stop. So you have to say when there's enough. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. What did you notice? Well, we already thought that she was bright, but she can get much brighter. So she's even toning down her brightness so that you can even bear to see her. Yes. If she put herself at full brightness, if you all shade your eyes for a moment, and she puts herself at full brightness... It's very bright. What do you notice? It's very bright. Everything around you becomes like day, doesn't it? No, more than that. Mm -hmm. We cannot see anything. It's so bright. Yes. Correct. Okay. So now let's place her, if one of you can choose a location on Earth that you can examine, and now place her in that environment. And if you go there with her, and she will make herself bright, and you'll see what happens to the surroundings. Mm. What do you notice? Yes, it becomes much brighter. This we cannot achieve. No. What is the purpose of that? Purpose of? Making things brighter. Well, let, let, <coughs> let me go one step further now and, and ask her to move a physical object on Earth. We don't want to do it in such a place that other people will notice because obviously <laughs> it will create a lot of confusion. But if we can choose a place that's quite private, uh, where nobody else on Earth actually is, and she will actually move a physical object on Earth for you. Mm. Yes, she can. And you can't? No. No. But again, we can influence the hearts and minds. So people. can she. In fact, she can do it to, uh, to extremes that are thousands and thousands of times more than you can if she chose to okay hmm. so we have a number of things going on now we've got two people in front of us who are younger than yourselves look younger than yourselves they live in a much better place than yourself and they live in a place that has color whereas you do not live in a place that has colour. They obviously seem very happy. They have a large amount of power, far in excess of what you can manage as a group, let alone each individually. Mm. And there must be a reason for all of these things being the case. Bearing in mind that they passed in very similar to condition, or in Matthew's case, even in a worse condition than many of you. We could get a lot more done if we had these capabilities. You could, but you may not wish to do the same things that you currently do. <laughs> oh. Does that make sense? And, and I want to explain to you how they got to have this power and these capabilities and this joy and this happiness and the location where they, their home is, um, how they got to have all of these things. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. In the spirit world, there are known to be now 36 dimensional spaces, which are universes in their own right. Uh -huh. You live in the very first one. Okay. And every single one of the, these dimensional spaces are higher than the next one. So the second one is higher than the first one and brighter and 
the persons living in that sphere have more power. And the third one is even more so, and the fourth one even more so, and so on. Okay. Now you live in the very first one. And in fact, you have not, even ex have not yet even gone to the first one properly. You are in a condition what is called earth-bound. In other words, you feel drawn to the earth because you're yet to let go of what of the desires you have to to do of what you want to do on earth does that mm. make sense and because you are yet to let go of that you remain on the earth and you do what you can to experience joy but what i'm suggesting to you is your joy is very limited as a result and you only know what you know through your personal discovery you have not discovered anything from anyone who's shared things with you at this point who have passed before you who obviously would know things that you maybe do not know does that make sense okay was there any questions at that stage <coughs> well there's a discussion happening here mm -hmm. so uh, what i'm suggesting feel, sorry what i'm suggesting is that you are in the lowest condition of these spheres, you're in the very first one of the spheres that are available to a person who's living in your state. Yes. Mm. Uh, now... And I'm also suggesting that you have the lowest amount of power compared to any other spirit in a higher state. Well, there is division. Mm -hmm. Some feel that they're not particularly interested in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. In fact, a majority of us at present feel... Can I, can I suggest why you're not interested? Yes. The reason why you're not interested is that many of you wish to continue what you're doing on Earth. Yes. And you do not believe there is anything better. That is correct. And what I'm suggesting to you that we, we have just provided evidence that there is a, not only a location that's better, but there's also a condition that's better. Many of us feel that we have established relationships with many people on earth. Mm -hmm. uh, we do good work on earth mm -hmm. and we would hate to jeopardize that. Yes, and that's where I can't agree with you. I do not believe you do good work on earth. Because the work on earth you do continues the same problems that are on earth as what ca have existed when you were on earth. And the, the only thing that can improve the condition of earth is for people on earth to improve to the condition of the spirits that you see before you, of Matthew and Veronique. Mm. And and what I'm suggesting to you is actually that you are contributing to the darkness that remains on Earth. Because you yourselves are not brighter than the Earth's condition. And I've yet to explain to you why you're not brighter. And I've yet to Perhaps explain to you how the spirit world actually works. Perhaps if you could explain to us then. Okay. Well, firstly, when you're on Earth, you had a physical body. When you died, that physical body disconnected from your spirit body. So now you are in a spirit form. No one on earth or very few people on earth can see you because most people on earth haven't got their spirit eyes opened and so they cannot see you. And you know that to be true. Yes. But you also have a soul which you have yet to add an awakening towards. You yourself are a soul, in fact, a half of one, not a complete soul, but a half of one soul. Okay. And the other half of your soul is called your soul mate. Okay. Right. Now, the way the spirit world is constructed is that every new level or in the spirit world, every new dimension, which is happier and better and has more power than the previous dimension, is a better dimension because it actually has more love in it. And mm. any person who's brighter has a higher condition of love than a person who's darker. So when you look at 
the condition of many people that you notice who are earthbound, who are spirits, you can see that there's some that are so dark that you can barely see them. They are so dark. Yes. They have very little love in their soul. Those same ones often look quite demonic, do they not? Mm. They look and sometimes they... They can barely maintain a form. They morph into a sort of a mass group. Of Correct, them. yes. So it's hard to even see their individualization, the, yes. that they are individuals. Yes. Yes. Then there's others that are not so dark as that, and you can see them as individuals. Mm. Obviously, with the two spirits you see before you, mm. they, you can see quite clearly that they are individuals in their own right. Yes. Yes. And obviously they have their own thoughts and their own feelings about every matter. Yep. They are not influenced by groups of people. No. No. And in fact, with the amount of power they have, they could choose to influence all of you if they chose to do so. Yes, it's hard to acknowledge. Do you want to see that in operation? Yes. They'll do it temporarily only as a demonstration, so there's no need to be concerned. What they're going to do is they're going to restrict your movement. And now they're going to restrict your movement to the point that you can't even move at all, each of you. And now you can try to move to other places on the earth. But you notice you can't. Mm -mm. No, that's amazing. So they have a large amount of power over you, even if they chose to exercise it. Oh, that was very unpleasant. Yes, because you're being controlled by another person. And it is always very unpleasant to be controlled by another person. And that's why I suggested we only do it as a demonstration. Mm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. yep. It actually is quite unloving to control other people, which okay. is the reason why they do not choose to do it with you. But you can see that they have the p potential of doing it if they so desired. Yes. Now, if you had their potential, you would do that, wouldn't you? Mm. If you found somebody on earth who was working against one of your desires and you could restrict him, you would probably... Perhaps, yes. You would probably Perhaps. take the action. If we not. deemed it for the greater good, we would do of it. Of course you would, yes. And what I'm suggesting to you is they have the power even to restrict you, let alone to restrict others. And what I'm suggesting to you is you will never receive such power while you remain reign in your current condition. Because of the way we would use it? Because of the way you use it, yes. Because of the way you would choose to use it. Uh, so you're saying that with privilege becomes responsibility? Correct. We but the privilege is... The privilege is, the responsibility is linked to love. So it becomes comes linked to how responsibly you use the power based on love. So the spirits before you, Matthew and Veronique, will never use their power in an unloving manner. Mm. Except in a method to, dis to demonstrate something to you. And they will always warn you beforehand when they do that. <laughs> so... Basically, you're saying that in order to gain privilege here, it is different to how we gained it on Earth. Correct. Hmm. You gained it on Earth, many of you gained it by default, by, by inheritance. Hmm. Some of you didn't. Some of you gained it through your deeds, if you could call it that, your actions that you hmm. took. But many of your actions were taken without any consideration or concern hmm. for other people and how it affected other people. Hmm. And yet these people in front of you, while they have the power to completely control you, in fact, they could restrict your movement so much that you can't even move at all, if they so desired. And they do not yes. take that power over you because love would prevent them from doing so. And yes, we did not correct you earlier, but when this woman, Veronique, showed us her life, mm -hmm. It wasn't that privileged as many of us. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Matthews was though. Yes, but now we see something different. What was that? 
Well, simply that these people have obviously earned privilege, mm -hmm. but she did not have it on earth. Correct. So in other words, it wasn't born to her. It wasn't given to her by inheritance. Mm. It, was not, she, it was not that she had a bad life, but no. it was no, she had perplexing a us slightly. She didn't have a wealthy life like you had. Yes. Or a life where you had already had servants and also authority. Yes. She didn't have that. No. And in fact, being a woman 280 years ago, it was very difficult for such a woman to gain any of those things. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So even though her family might have had such things, she herself would not have had it. So in fact you're saying that... there's a new set of rules. That's exactly what I'm saying. And it's a set of rules that you know nothing about, which is concerning. Mm. And what I'm suggesting to you is that that concern should drive some further investigation. Well, yes, now there is interest. Because if, if you yourselves can be completely restricted to the point where you couldn't even move by one person, mm. then obviously there's some concern with regard to the power you could then exercise. If these particular people wished to have control over the earth, can you see that all that, one of the things they could easily do is completely control you and you would have no influence on the earth whatsoever. Mm. That's how much power they have, one of them. So, but none, ha none have ever done this. No, us. that's right, because it's not loving to do so. Uh -huh. and, and you would need to learn the principles of love in order to get into the condition they're in. So this is what we must do then? Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting, yes. And now I need to introduce you to two types of love so that you can see the difference between them. Okay. But, but what I'm demonstrating to you is there's obviously things about love that these people have learned that have given them power and even the power to completely control you if they so desired. Mm. And yet they don't exercise that power except under special circumstances mm. and only when love can be engaged in the process. Now, it's loving for them to demonstrate to you their power, so they did so. Mm -hmm. Right? to demonstrate to you that your power is actually very limited in comparison to theirs. Mm. And in doing so, that helps you understand some of the principles of what I'm trying to share with you. Yes, yes, we see this. Mm. So the beauty of this kind of demonstration is that it helps you see that, that you are being allowed to have an effect on the earth, <laughs> not given it. You are being allowed to have it. Because if the, yeah, you mentioned this earlier, what is the difference? Well, these people that are in front of you, Matthew and Veronique, they have the ability to actually influence and restrict every single person on earth if they so desired all at the same time. They could, they could make, just by their presence, they could make, and by their intent, they could make all wars on earth cease if they so desired, if they used their power unlovingly. Do you understand? Yes, but the question is one of discerning between power that is allowed and power that is given. Because you yes. said on earth that we that we the fact. Well, well, I'm power. getting to the point of that. Okay. The fact that these particular people, Matthew and Voronik, can actually completely restrict your movements, and in fact could completely restrict pretty much everybody's movements if they so desired, and yet they choose not to is an indication of the level of their power, is it not? You can't restrict anybody's movements on Earth. You can only influence them to go somewhere, here or there. You can't, there are many times in your influence over the last, for those of you who have been there a long time, 400 years, there's many times where you've tried to influence somebody to do something, but you couldn't influence them against their will. When they, when they engaged their own will, you struggled to influence them. It was only when your wills were coincidental, they coincided with each other, that you could easily influence them to do something that you wished for them to do. Mm. However, the power that Matthew and Veronica have is completely different to that. They could completely stop you from doing anything on earth if they so desired. 
Yes, but this is not the essence of our question. So they're giving you freedom. Can you see that? You don't have freedom by birth and you don't have freedom by privilege. You have freedom because many brighter spirits are allowing you to have freedom. Because if they so desired, they could completely restrict your behaviour and movements at any point in time. So, so you are being allowed to exert your freedom. You are being allowed. You haven't got the same power they have. You could not have this freedom unless they allowed you to have it. But we do have power on earth, some elements of power. Yes. How well, uh, do we discern do what we are allowed and what we are given? We feel we are given this power and you are saying it is allowed, we are allowed to do it. What is the difference? I'm saying that you were never given power over another person. You were allowed to take power over another person if that was your will, the exercise of your will. But these two have been given power? Is this what you're saying? I, I'm saying that they have power. They have, but is it because it's allowed or because it's given? No, because they have gotten themselves into a condition of love where it can be exercised responsibly. Is this confusing? None of us understand the difference between given and allowed. All right, well, let's, uh, well, let's work on that further. What I'm going to do now is ask you to focus your attention on one particular individual on earth who you really want to do something and what's going to happen is Matthew and um, Veronique, or even just one of those, so let's choose Matthew or Veronique, will restrict you from having the influence you would normally have. So you try to influence the person. Yes, yes, he can. And he can restrict you from influencing the person. Yes. So if logically then, surely Matthew has control over you. Does he not? Yes. He chooses to not exercise that control. Has but he, he has been control. given that control or have, has it been allowed? Well, all control and power is given by someone, allowed by someone. I'm suggesting to you it's not your birthright, it's not your privilege. It's actually been given to you. That's what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that it's not yours because you deserve it. I'm suggesting that it's yours because you're allowed to choose to take it if that's what you so desire. And in choosing to take it, you demonstrate your poor condition of love. Ah, so you're speaking about the difference between allowance and entitlement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Now you believe that you have power because you're entitled to have power. And I'm suggesting to you, no, you're not actually entitled to have power. You take it and you've been allowed to take it because your free will decision is to take it. And in, access, and in exercising this free will decision to take power, you've darkened your own condition. You've worsened your own condition. This is one of the reasons why you are not in the bright condition of the spirits who are next to you. I see. No, we are beginning to see your point. Does that make sense? These people have <coughs> certain powers that they do not exert. But can um, exert. And when under they do, conditions. it feels terrible. And so yeah. but they so they're choosing not to. Yes. As an act of of love. Respect for the their fellow beings. Not only respect for their fellow beings, but also respect for God's laws. And in well, fact, that is not something we've considered. Correct. And, and in fact, these particular people who do believe in God actually would not ever do anything against God's laws. When you have done many, many things against God's laws and yet you have not been aware of such doing. No, we are not aware of this. And in fact, many of you do not actually firmly believe in a God at all. No. And I can demonstrate that God actually exists. But that's not something that you've even investigated. No. And what I'm suggesting to you that if God does exist, and, if, and God is a God of love, which obviously these two people in front of you seem to indicate by, lo by logical inference, then, then what the result is, 
is that you are doing things against God's laws. And this is why you are in your current restricted state. So from what you are saying, see in the past we've not felt restricted, but you are saying we are inhabiting a very small part of mm -hmm. what is your potential potential yeah. in terms of locations yes and you're actually accessing a very small part of the universe itself these particular people could could um, Matthew tell you what dimension or sphere he is in he says number eight number eight right and can Veronique tell you what sphere she is in five right so they live in very different locations to yourself. Five removed and eight removed from where you are. Mm -hmm. And they live in such a condition that they're happy, personally happy. They have a huge amount of power. They could choose to completely restrict your behavior and movements if they cho so chose to do, but they choose not to do it because to do so would be against God's laws of love. Mm. Okay. And so what I'm suggesting to you is that it then becomes very important if, for you to learn about this love thing. Doesn't yes, it? this is evident now. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's logical to learn about it at least uh, because it obviously will give you many advantages um, and no seeming disadvantages. Some here are concerned about the time this will take away from our important business on earth. Well, important business on earth that you're being allowed to engage in, you mean? Yes. Yes. Well, what I'm suggesting to you is what you classify as important business on earth is actually damaging people on earth. How is this so? Because you're influencing them, them to do things that you judge as the right thing to do, but you yourselves do not know what the right thing to do is. You do not know what God's laws are, and therefore you do not know what is right. And so you are in danger of cont continuing to harm your own condition and make yourselves even darker. But how are God's laws relevant to the laws of, say, commerce or laws of... We have much experience in these areas. Of course, but no man's law, none of men's law apply to where you are. Only God's laws apply to where you live. And you are currently in a lot of disharmony with those laws, which is governing so, where you live. But if we influence those people on earth mm -hmm. to assist them in... Learning God's laws? No, well... See, at the moment you're assisting them to learn your own laws, or to learn the laws to, of the land. To or progress to in their no, but sphere your, of excellence. Yeah, but your idea of progression is to take control or of other people, or to manipulate other people's will. Oh, well, we would never do what these two did to us in the demonstration. We would never restrict a person entirely well. Mm, I don't know about that, because you have done in the past. Mm. And, and also, the, if you consider, some of you arrived in the spirit world in a better condition than where you are now. And as a result of your choices and decisions that you're currently undertaking, your condition is worsening. Many of you chose to not look at yourselves in the mirror when you first arrived in the spirit world. And if you had have done and then compared your condition and looked at yourself now, you would see your condition has actually worsened rather than improved. And there is a reason for this. Now, what I would like to do is get Matthew to show you a picture of your own condition when you first arrived in the spirit world and then compare that with your own condition right now. He'll put a mirror in front of you so that you can see your own condition right now and compare the two. Yes. So what do you notice? Yes, it is worse. I, well, I look worse. I'm presuming this is what you mean. Correct. You look worse than you did when you first arrived mm. in the spirit world. And I'm suggesting to you hard. that the reason why is because you do not understand God's laws and at the moment you are breaking them and in the process of breaking them, your condition gets darker. It gets worse. 
And eventually you'll end up, if you continue in your current set of behaviour, you'll end up like the demonic people that you've examined. No. If you continue your behaviour. This cannot be possible. Well, it is possible. We would never allow it. No, but you don't even, you hadn't even noticed before I pointed out to you what was happening. Yes. You had not even noticed. And this is the same problem that these, same, these other spirits have experienced in their past. They did not even notice that they were working against a law and therefore their own condition was degrading. They only found it more and more difficult to influence people on earth and so eventually they banded together in larger and larger packs to influence those people. And if you examine some of the groups of spirits that are around me at the moment, you can see there are packs of millions of them, and yet they do not have much influence. Yes. There is some dissent amongst us now. Mm -hmm. Some are of the opinion that we must discuss what you have presented. Mm -hmm. I'm perfectly happy to end the discussion here and we continue it at another time if you so choose. But I suggest to you that it would be helpful to learn as much as you possibly could first. Yes, perhaps if, if there are a number of us who want to ask a few more questions. Sure. We haven't decided if this, what you are saying... Well, I should say that until we viewed can you see from Our a logic? Can you can you see from a logical perspective what I'm saying has some merit at least to investigate? Doesn't certainly, it? yes. Because there is this concerning thing going on where your own condition is worsening, right? And that is a concerning thing, is yes. it not? Yes. Yes, this concerns all of us. And and what I would like to do is grab some of the spirits who you believe are in a terrible, terrible condition, but who did not arrive in this condition. And if you examine the history of what they chose to do during their time when they were in the, in the spirit world, you will see why their condition is so bad. Mm. And the reason why their condition is so bad, as you can see, is because after their arrival in the spirit world, they chose to do further things that were out of harmony with some law of some kind, obviously, and that caused the darkening of their condition. So it seems as if you are saying to us that we must leave the earth. I'm saying to you that you must learn the law, whatever the law is, <laughs> of where you live. And you need to bring yourself in harmony to it because it's God's law and not man's. And therefore it cannot be changed. So this is the question. How does one learn God's laws? Well, this is what this, these bright spirits who are with you can share with you. The, the laws are all about laws of love. And you need to understand love in order to understand law. Now, there's two ways you, you can develop this process. One way is by developing the love that's inside of you. So in other words, you can obtain some level of brightness and some good condition by developing the level of love that you have internally. In other words, one of the things you would have to stop doing is influencing other people on earth. And many of you don't want to stop that, so that's going to be difficult, right? Mm. And that's one way you could brighten your own condition. You would then be living in harmony with the law of free will, which is a law that uh, God has in the spirit world as a law of love. And that love is what is causing you, that, that law is what is causing your darkness. Every time you break that law, every time you break this free will, which is a, a law of love, of another person, every time you break the free will of another person, your condition will darken further and you will become less and less able to influence anyone in the end. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So I'm suggesting to you that if you at least learn about free will and that particular law, then obviously you can see some behaviour that's causing your own darkness and your own degradation. So, but if we are actually motivated by the desire to assist mm -hmm. or to direct things in what we can see is quite a beneficial mm -hmm. uh, direction mm -hmm. for those on earth. Mm -hmm. Can you see that Matthew does the same thing but in a completely different way to yourself? 
Well, he doesn't interest himself with the matters that we interest ourselves with. But what matters does he interest himself with? Because that's the important point, isn't it? Can you see that he, matter, he interests himself on, on earth with matters that involve a person's character, their, mm -hmm. their ethics and morality. He, he influences them in regard to their, their desire to connect to God and receive some of God's love. These are the areas where he is primarily concerned in influencing people if he can. Mm. And he, but he only does so in harmony with love. He only does so if the person's desire is in harmony with that. He doesn't do it unless the person's desire is in harmony. He doesn't influence them against their will. Mm. You follow me? Yes. And as a result, he's a very, very bright condition. That's one of the reasons why he's in a bright condition. It's not, it's not the main reason, but it's one of the reasons. Okay. It's difficult for us, again, there is some discussion mm -hmm. where okay. many feel that we are influencing people what I'm with suggesting their consent. We are advising rather than directing, but, uh, yeah, but some others of us are beginning to... Well, there's another, there's another factor, and that is what you believe is their consent may be their consent to do something that is actually against God's laws. And if that actually occurs then both you and they will darken in their condition. So you're actually harming mm. them. And if you examine the condition of the people you are influencing, you can see that their conditioning is getting darker, just as your condition is getting darker. Mm. Again, this is not something we've ever paused to examine. No. You've found it, you like them getting darker because it's easier to influence them. And that's because their condition of darkness allows more influence to occur. The brighter the person, the more difficult it is to influence them. This is how you've found it very hard to influence myself, even though you would have liked mm. to at times. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. And you have attempted to do so. Yes, in certain areas. Mm -hmm but it wasn't very effective. No. Okay. So what I'm suggesting to you is that while you work against the law of the environment that you're living in, your condition will continue to darken and worsen in the sense of your influence will lessen unless the people on earth also get into a darker condition you'll obviously then be able to continue to influence them in the same manner. But I'm suggesting to you that everything that's, anything that gets darker is out of harmony with Gov and out of harmony with God's laws. And there are penalties associated with such laws, including the penalty that eventually results in you not being able to influence anyone at all, except to do evil. Hmm. So we must investigate we must investigate this idea mm. of God's laws. Yes. And, and uh, what I'm going to suggest to you is there's two types of laws that govern the soul, which, is what's, which are the laws that are very, very important to, to understand. The first type of law regarding the soul is a law, what I call the law of natural love. This law involves things like ethics and morality. Mm -hmm. But it's God's definition of ethics and God's definition of morality. So obviously we need to find God's definition if we're going to progress in those understanding of those laws. And, and so many of us have, as we mentioned, some varied religious background. Mm -hmm. So we're not Having talking about religion here, because there's many people, as you've observed, who are religious on earth, who are very, very dark in their condition. So obviously religion so, does not improve the condition of a person. Which God? We're, well, not, not any of the gods of anybody on earth, obviously. So how do we know? How do so we I'm, find out? So when I talk about God, I am talking about the person who made the laws of the spirit world and the laws on earth. 
that govern. And that is not re- he. He is not reflected on Earth. He is not reflected appropriately on Earth at all, no. On Earth there's a belief that God is a punishing, wrathful God, and that is not true. But God does have laws that have penalties, which you are actually living in the penalty of right at this moment. So how does one discover? How does one discover God? Yes. Well, Well, the laws at least. Well, there's two ways you can discover laws. One is by your own experimentation which is a very slow way of discovering anything. Many of you have only experimented with things on Earth and therefore have little experience in experimenting with things in the spirit world. Mm. And, uh, and so that's probably going to be quite a slow way of discovery of God's laws. The alternative is to actually have a relationship with God and God tells you what the laws are through that relationship. Now that relationship can only estab- be established through a heartfelt longing for God. Now again, we can engage in an experiment, if you wish, to demonstrate this. Okay. All right. Now, at this stage, none of you really have a very clear idea that God exists at all. Is that not correct? That is correct. Yeah. So, so you basically believe that God is an earth-based idea that you know helps people socially and sometimes morally and sometimes ethical, but, but that's not even evident sometimes. And uh, that's as far as your opinion goes about God at this stage. Mm. What I'm suggesting to you is that God is an entity, an all-powerful entity who created the universe and all the laws in it. And God gave the ability for mankind to exercise his own will in order to do his own thing as well. So God gave us a whole heap of gifts, if you like. And this God is, is is like a parent. We can engage a relationship with this parent and learn things from this parent directly, rather than having to go through any media, intermediary or inter- intercessor. So the Christian faith on earth, for example, teaches that God is only available through the intercessor of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not true. Mm-hmm. Right? The Muslim faith on earth teaches that God is only available through the teachings of Muhammad. Mm-hmm. And that's not true. Okay. Right? What I'm suggesting is that God wants a relationship with each one of her children. Okay. Okay. And God, being having masculine and feminine qualities, can be said to be our mother or our father. Oh, this is a lot of information. There is much need for discussion amongst (laughs) us. Well, what I'm suggesting is an experiment is always better than a discussion. And the reason why is an experiment will tell you truths that a discussion will only be able to philosophize about. Do you follow? Yes. You know a lot of people on earth talk and talk and talk and talk and never accomplish anything. Mm. And, you know, it's true. many philosophers are included in that, are they not? Yes. And what I'm suggesting is rather than philosophizing, which is really all the discussion can accomplish at this point, you'd be far better off engaging some experiments which would actually have a result. Okay. The primary experiment is very, very simple. And that is saying to yourself and actually feeling like you mean it, that if there is a God, you would like to receive the awareness that God exists from that God. In other words, you'd like God to tell you that God exists, if there is a God. And it has to be a feeling, it can't be a thought. It has to be a feeling that you would like to know the truth about that particular issue. Wow. Yeah, those of you, some of you haven't tried the experiment, and I suggest you do, but those of you who have, what have you found? That it's unlike anything. Yeah, so what have you found? What's the, ex- what's the experiment tell you? It seems that God exists. Exactly. Wow, how do we do that again? By having a feeling for another answer of some kind. So let's have a feeling. Another feeling. Have we been breaking your laws? Oh, that's not such a good feeling. No. So but God's told you quite clearly, yes, you've been breaking my laws. Oh. Does that make sense? Yes. 
Now you can actually also receive love from God. So this is here, you've just been receiving truth from God. All right? But you can also choose to receive love from God. But again, it is based upon whether you have a feeling that you want to receive it. So if God desires to give you some love and, and you desire to receive it, then you will receive it. Does that make sense? So if you would like some love from God, you can have a feeling of wanting that love from God and God will give you some of that love. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Why is that? I don't know. Can I suggest to you, if you ask Matthew to confirm what I'm saying to you, I suggest to you that actually the reason why Matthew's in the condition he is, even though he arrived on earth in the condition that you saw, is because he received God's love. Yeah, yes, oh, I don't know, it makes me feel strange. Well, it makes you feel emotional, which is something that you have not felt for some time. And you're not allowing the emotion. You want, you want God's love to be felt without having an emotion about it. But love is an emotion. You're going to have an emotion about it. There's going to need to develop within you a tolerance for emotion. And this is not something that many of you, particularly the ones that have been there the longest, you hardly can remember when you last had an emotion, other than an emotion of desire to you know, do what you believe is the right thing on earth. It's the same <coughs> feeling that I get when the bright ones come around. Correct. That's why you have not been able to speak uh. to the bright spirits, which is the answer to that question. You see? Oh, oh. There's a feeling. Why in can just the thought of it make me feel like this? Well, it, because you're allowing the possibility of love entering, but obviously the love entering causes there to be disharmony inside of yourself. And that's because, as you've just learnt from God, you've been breaking some of God's laws of love. And so, so your condition of love is such that when you receive some love, you will feel sad rather than happy about receiving it. Mm. Does that make sense? Because what God's love will do is expose to you more where the law has been broken. And to actually uh. progress using this method, you would need to be willing to go through the emotions that this particular, that the love itself, you know, brings up inside of you. And many of those emotions are going to be quite sad, They're going to, where, where you come to realise things that you didn't realise before. But this is a gaining of your awareness. This is a growth in your awareness. You can't teach people on earth something that you yourself have not yet learned. So you can exercise the desire to help people on earth, but you need to learn to do it in harmony with God's laws. Because if you do it out of harmony with God's laws, all you're doing is causing your own degradation and the degradation of the people you influence, which obviously will have its penalties. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm. Oh, we need rest now. Can I make one suggestion before you go? Yes. If you just examine now the brightness that's around you, what do you notice? It seems better. You're brighter, are you not? It seems to be. Yes. You are in a different condition. And can I explain why? Please do. Can you have a look at yourselves in the mirror? What do you notice? It's also better. Correct. Why is this? Because you firstly connected with God. You allowed yourself to know that God exists. You allowed yourself to know that you have been breaking God's laws and you allowed yourself to contemplate the possibility of receiving God's love. And just those three things alone have already improved your condition. Wow. 
that's extraordinary. Mm. And so what I would encourage you to do is to listen to Matthew more about some of these things. So when you feel you've got emotions to work through and you need to let yourself feel these emotions, but, but you will have further question of, obviously. And my suggestion is to engage Matthew in these questions. He desires to help you. He's been in a similar condition or even worse condition than yourselves mm. in the past. He knows how to get out of that condition into a better condition, a more powerful and loving condition. And he knows how to improve, how you can improve. He has all that knowledge because he's done it himself. He's actually okay. engaged the process himself. And so. what I'm suggesting is that you listen to what he's got to say, even though it's challenging. And even in though in particular, it's emotionally challenging. You mm. follow? Mm -hmm. yep. It's the emotional challenge that has caused you the most concern. And yet it is, the, um, it is the emotions that need to change. And he can show you how to actually change them. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Now, I just want to raise one more issue with you, if I can. All of you are very, very blocked to women. And yet, you're the other half of your soul, in many cases, is a woman. Mm. And what I'm suggesting to you is one of the things you will need to learn, and the reason why our sister came to you, is because she's a woman and she can teach you things that you need to learn about women, that you've been completely blocked in learning. And in fact, it's one of the reasons why your condition is dark. It's not that we dislike women, it's just that they're strange creatures. I know why you believe they're strange creatures, but they are not strange creatures. They are easily understood, just like men are easily understood. If you understand issues of love, you will certainly understand both genders. Okay. And you will certainly not treat one gender as superior to the other, which is what you've been doing. Mm. You see women as inferior to men, which is one of the reasons why your condition of love is low at this point. And she can help you work through that particular issue. Okay. Does that make sense? At this stage, you don't realise the importance of it to your own happiness. No. But in the future, you will. You see, it's like everything that you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Mm. Yes. And you don't know the benefits that knowing could bring you. Mm. And this is what I'm suggesting to you. Don't close down your investigation just because you don't already know something. As I've demonstrated to you, there's already a lot of things we've demonstrated that you didn't know before. Well, certainly we can see that we thought we knew things that we in fact do not know. Correct. And what I'm suggesting is that's going to be okay. If God's an infinite being, then obviously there's an infinite amount of things to learn potentially. And so you need to be open to knowing, to learning things you don't know. Okay. Now, I've one question for you. Have I answered most of your, all of your questions at this stage? Or has the experience been unexpected so that you've forgotten the questions? <laughs> we feel largely overwhelmed. Yes. Certainly you have surpassed what... Well, we have gained knowledge that we did not anticipate even asking anything about. Mm. So... And this is going to be your experience with Matthew as well. Mm. We do appreciate this. Mm. I'm suggesting to you that you're, you have the ability to become as happy and joyful and live in the same location as Matthew. But it requires following his advice and actually engaging the experiments with God that he suggests you to engage. In our discussion, we just engaged three experiments and you could see the result of the first one was quite good. 
the result of the second one was quite emotionally overwhelming negatively mm, in but your, not but not yes it's not you, particularly well uh, it's hard to describe yes there's feelings you have to feel about it and the result of the first one was also good so so what I'm suggesting to you is that uh, obviously there must be a lot of things that you can engage with your experiment with God which will help you understand a lot of the things that I've been trying to talk to you about. Yes, and it is simply that we, there are some members among our group who have been here, been living in this way for hundreds and hundreds of years, much yes. longer than myself, and mm -hmm. they wish to have some meeting and discussion about this now. Yes. And because I'm perfectly happy they to... they are reluctant yes. to, to... We have many concerns upon the earth, many... I understand. Yeah. And in fact, I can even assist in any discussion with regard to those particular things. We can discuss your concerns and, and discuss mm -hmm. who's being influenced and how they need to be influenced and so forth, if you wish. But um, perhaps that's for another discussion. If you yes. have some time now to mm -hmm. work your way through the issues that we've already raised, and then determine whether you want to have another discussion, then um, we would love to have another discussion with you if, that opportunity, if you would like the opportunity. No, the consensus at the moment is that we would like to return and discuss some matters if possible. Mm -hmm. But first we need time to, to discuss amongst ourselves. Yeah, and also to resolve some of the things that you've learnt in this discussion. Yes. Can I suggest to you, with resolution of any issue, you can always ask God directly. Mm. And you will receive a most rapid reply if your desire is sincere. If your desire is not sincere, you won't receive a reply at all. Mm. Yes, and this, this was an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. And so I, I personally wish to repeat that, if I may, yes. if I can. Yes, yes. And in that process, you'll learn many things and, uh, and, and you'll grow quite rapidly, have the ability to grow quite rapidly. You'll learn about some laws that you've never heard of before, mm. but are that the highest laws of the universe, mm. the laws of love, uh, including laws of repentance and forgiveness, which are two principles of those laws, you'll need to engage if you wish to pro continue progressing. And my suggestion is that you discuss those particular matters with Matthew. And if you have any further questions, I can certainly help you with them. We thank you. So. Mm. <sighs> Do you find it challenging when they're really um, emotionless? Man, it's <coughs> like mm. I find... Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling their resistance or my resistance to their Well, it feels to me they are emotionless. Well, they're, they're under tight control is probably the better way of saying it. Yeah. But there's a whole heap of stored up emotion that they, you know, <laughs> you know there's so many issues I could have chosen to discuss with them. But Yeah. Um, because, it, you know, right from the beginning, they were falsifying information to me. <laughs> um, they were really indignant about even that. Even their they're own like, names. You I, know, I'm like, not, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> not going to own up to who I am. <laughs> and and, and like, I'm not, I'm not uh, in a facade. What are you talking about? Yeah. It was a total feeling I had. You know, and some of the feelings they had towards people on earth, <laughs> particularly the common man, were, when they're common woman, <laughs> were pretty, mm -hmm. were pretty like, strong emotions which they weren't accurately demonstrating at all. No, no. Mm. no. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I hope our brothers and sisters who are listening to it enjoy that. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, perhaps we could say, see you to them. And I <laughs> <laughs> hope you've enjoyed that discussion. And, uh, and thanks for you, Darlene, for doing the channeling for us. Yeah, and uh, hopefully it's benefited that group of spirits. But I'm sure if we give them the opportunity, they'll probably return and have a chat because I feel quite certain they um, will want to know more, particularly the ones who have been there for a longer period of time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for your time.